you go down an endless rabbit hole of buying stuff off Amazon late at night. We're gonna get into all the must-haves that you should spend your money on on new purchases for baby. For those of you who don't know, this is my sister Cass. Um, she helps me with content and um, providing you guys with really great recommendations on our blog website. And today she's helping me out with her point of view um, on baby must have. If you're returning, please make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell if you want to be notified every time that I post. Before we jump into the fun stuff, I always like to caveat by saying these are my personal, well, our personal recommendations. Um, we are not certified or licensed in baby care, baby specialty. We're just two mamas making it in the world. So this video is for um, informational and entertainment purposes only. Um, if you have any questions, as always, all of the uh, products that we list out are going to be in the description box below. Um, and this video is not sponsored. Everything that we are sharing with you, we have spent our hard earned money on, um, whether you're nursing, bottle feeding, formula, whatever you want to call it. Um, if you're going to use bottles, don't spend money on getting a bunch of um, like starter sets from all these different brands. No. Because I can tell you, like my son, the only bottle he liked was the Tommy Tippy. My daughter, we're still trying to figure out. Her son, I think you started with- We had to start with the Doc Browns because he was a Nikki baby yeah. and had trouble feeding. So we started with the Doc Browns and then went to, I think the Comatomos, which we don't have here. And then we ended up with the Avents because they're more budget friendly. Yeah, so, <laughs> so guys, it's crazy. So instead of spending your money or putting it on your registry and having to mess with returns and all of that junk, babylist.com has a really great option. It's called a bottle box, and I think they actually offer one for pacifiers as well. So you get like one of each of these major brands within the box. I think it's a, a set of five bottles. And you can try them out at home and then based on what your baby likes, take your Target gift card from your registry and go to Target and purchase the set of bottles that worked really well for you. Mm -hmm. It's less hassle um, and it just allows you to kind of explore the options and price points without having to invest your money um, to do it or waste a gift, right? Have a nursing station, and I say stations, um, yes. throughout your house where you can nurse comfortably if you are choosing to breastfeed. The other thing that I would recommend is a bottle warmer of course a drying rack I thought was really good um, absolutely must have the other thing that I would recommend if you're nursing specifically um, so my lactation consultant is a godsend I love her um, <laughs> and I'll put her information down in the description box also because she does telehealth um, and it's covered by insurance now so oh, that's awesome. really great for her but um, she did tell me that um, a lot of mom wor moms worry about milk supply but overproduction is actually more um, likely than underproduction. And for me and my sister, we both were overproducers. Overproducers yes. by a lot. And so I would recommend, um, obviously a breast pump is helpful, um, especially when you're getting your milk in for the first time, especially it's much more um, dramatic um, to help you kind of get a little bit of extra milk out to keep the pressure and discomfort from like getting worse. So little note on that though be careful not to over pump over, because yeah. it's all supply and demand the more you pump and the more you feed the more you're going to make so this is yes. just to relieve the discomfort with that in mind what i did lean on more is uh what's called a haka um and these guys are um a european brand europe makes like all these progressive things because they have like better maternity leave and all sorts yes, of stuff than do. we do really but cool. much more supportive of moms um i got this recommendation from my lactation consultant um and what these are is they're just little um basically silicone, suction cups. silicone suction cup type of containers and so what you do is you squeeze it um and then you just basically i would do this and then like allow it to suction to your nipple um and then you release and while my daughter or son was nursing on one side i would put this on the other to catch the extra milk and guys i'm not kidding you when i tell you if you have oversupply or in that first time the first few weeks where your milk supply is like through the roof figuring out what baby actually needs these things would collect like I have a large one because that's how much milk I would get and then when I flipped her over to the other side if I needed to I would do the same thing on the side she just nursed on just to make sure that nothing dripped on me and I'm telling you guys you can create a milk supply storage if mm -hmm. you want to without having to pump just by using this like you can, this guy is a five ounce one and I'm telling you I would at least get halfway um, and this one I believe is a four ounce so it's a little bit smaller so I actually have both 
and I don't regret buying both because I kept one at home and I kept one in the diaper bag. That was a godsend also because when you're out and about and nursing in those first few weeks or whatever, especially, you don't want to have like soaked, um, I call them booby pads, whatever you want to call them. Sure, booby pads. Um, or, you know, milk leaking through your shirt. And so this made it like way easy to nurse her and not have to worry about that. And then I just took a cooler to mm -hmm. put the milk into a bag and pop it in the cooler until we got home. So... And guys worth it yeah absolutely and like like she said you know it's great just to kind of help get a freezer stash going without um, over pumping right without yeah. having it to pump extra that milk was going to go to waste anyways and this way once you're ready to leave your baby for a few hours you don't have to worry about oh i have to start pumping now do i have something to feed my baby so the other things are burp cloths what we did is we went to the home depot and they have <laughs> giant packs of these microfiber cloths they're nothing fancy um and these things like as soon as baby spits up it like soaks right in and goes nowhere it doesn't get on you it doesn't super get on anything absorbent. super absorbent <laughs> what we ended up doing was i wanted to kind of keep with the theme of our nursery um which was you know this nice colorful colorful theme so i got a multi-pack of like 50 that had blue yellow orange and green microfiber towels for like 20 bucks on amazon yeah so i was able to kind of keep it kind of cute but functional yeah and it's way more cost effective like Very much so. a three pack of those um cotton type or even flannel type burp mm -hmm. cloths um are easily 10 bucks these you get like 50 you get i think 20 come in the one at home depot and it's like 10 bucks or 15 bucks yeah. like it's way way more cost effective um the other thing that i recommend over some of the other options are these um moisture wicking um bibs and so you can use these this is like a feeding one and so i'm going to turn it around because this kind of shows it has like this moisture barrier on it you can hear it it has this moisture barrier in it. It doesn't seep through to their clothes. And so that was something that I really um, was a big advocate for because my son drooled so much while he was teething. And it was like, why does he have a bib if his shirt's going to get damp right. anyway? And I think the last thing we wanted to talk about was the Chico Caddy hook on, um, what is it called? High chair, I guess. High chair. Um, and chair. so uh -huh. instead of having to purchase a high chair for us, we really like to have like a family environment. Mm -hmm. So we like to sit at the table together and we wanted my son and daughter to have that from an early age. So this guy attaches to your table. You just can't use it if you have a glass tabletop. The other thing is you can also keep it in your car if you mm -hmm. go to restaurants or anything like that. Because not every restaurant has like booster seats or high chairs readily available or clean. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's nice to kind of have an option to take that also. If you want to do a high chair option, I recommend the IKEA antelope it's 20 bucks and it's like an all plastic high chair which we got from my husband's cousin and the thing is awesome because it wipes down there's no like fabric or whatever for goop and gunk to get stuck in there's no like where you have to take everything apart to get in all the nooks and crannies and the insert it comes with is inflatable so as baby is more stable you can use like de deflate it so that they don't have as much cushion in there mm -hmm. and then remove it all together when they're old enough that they don't need it yeah we actually have um, our high chair is uh, Graco. Oh, Graco. Um, it actually folds, which is great because our house um, doesn't have a lot of storage. So we're able to fold it up and put it up against the wall so it doesn't take up nearly as much room. Um, the downside with that one, though, is it's not as cleanable as the one from Ikea, mm -hmm. um, but it is more compact. The next thing that we would recommend from um, a development standpoint for baby um, is more in the like place. I would say category mm -hmm. um, and that's a play mat ours that we use for my daughter now she, it has like a really colorful um, base so on tummy time you, you can flip her over and there's stuff for her to do but it also has the attachments for the jungle gym toys that go over so you can attach them to the mat on the ground so she can pull at it or um, play with it during tummy time as she starts progressing and wanting to interact more it's really good also for the grasping capability for babies. So the mm -hmm. toys that hang over um, allow them to kind of practice reaching and grasping with their hands. And then of course, I put them in like a four position. Lassa likes to kick, and that kicking motion is a coordination skill for her. So she mm -hmm. can understand that she's kicking and hitting that toy and do it on repeat. And it's something that entertains and helps de develop their milestones. Yeah, these playmats really are great for all of it. Like I said, mm -hmm. safe place to put them down, um, great visual stimulation, and it's great for that hand-eye coordination as right. well. So my toddler is boy and he loves being outside. He loves 
running and jumping and balls and everything. And it's just a lot safer outside than indoors to do any of those things. So um, our backyard gets a lot of sun though. And having my daughter out there on the carrier, it gets hot in the Georgia heat. Mm -hmm. So um, I found this guy on Amazon and I'll put the link in. So this is what it looks like. Um, it's just this little pop-up tent and it collapses into, I don't think it has a picture of it, but it collapses into um, like a little um, pouch for it. It actually helps in terms of shielding her from the sun and it's great because I can put her in there with some of her toys, get her out of the heat and out of the sun um, while I interact with my toddler or I'm sitting outside of it. Um, and then it's really cute because he likes to go in there too and it's big enough that you could fit two toddlers or a baby in a toddler so he can play and interact with her also without her being in the direct sunlight. So this guy actually will clip onto that little tent um, and it doesn't collapse it. It's strong enough to support it and we can turn it on. But I think these were maybe like 15 to 17 bucks on Amazon. I got two, one for my daughter and one for my son. The fan has um, a multi-speed setting. So when you turn it on, you can crank it up or down um, with that. And then it's also rechargeable. But what really like was an epiphany moment for me, when your child's rear facing, that um, AC does not get to them and they get very toasty in the car seat, even when the car's running. As for my son, I had one of those noodle things for your car. It was a hassle. A hassle. <laughs> yeah. I clip it on the little garment or handle that um, folds up and down on the um, roof. And I can turn it on and point it and angle it at my daughter um, so she stays nice and cool. And it makes such a big difference in such a small little product. Um, they're also great too um, for going for walks um, in the summer. Yeah. Um, I, def I got one last summer um, because we do like to be outside a lot. Um, and we do like to go for walks. So just to help keep him a little bit cooler um, in his car seat, or not his car seat, in his stroller, um, was a big, big help. So speaking of being outside, from the time that they are, I think it's one month old or so. Sunscreen and bug spray yeah. are a must. Sunscreen everywhere, bug spray, especially in the south, um, or if you're in a wooded area. Yeah. Um, so the one that we liked for our sunscreen was the Baby Gannics. Um, this, this has SPF 50, um, perfectly safe for, uh, like I said, like she said, uh, about one month and up. That's the way that I found to put it on though, spray it on your hands and then put it on the kid. Yeah. So, so I will say with this, it's a mineral based sunscreen, which is really great, which means that it's good for sensitive skin, which mm -hmm. is why we like it for baby. Um, because babies tend to have much more sensitive skin than adults. And then as far as bug sprays go, we also use it's the same brand. Well, yeah, we use the baby organics, but I also got the Burt's Bees. They do also oh, okay. make a good one, but those are more natural bug repellents with a calendula and, um, more, like I said, more natural bug repellents. However, in, we're in at our house, um, we have a lot of bugs, um, mosquitoes, etc. She has a very wooded backyard. Yes, we do. <laughs> so for kids, I want to say, I can't remember if it was six months or a year and up, DEET up to 30% is considered safe for small children. Um, so if you do live in a heavily wooded area, if you have ticks, fleas, heavy mosquito infestations, um, or you're going to be on a hike, anything like that, I would recommend using some kind of DEET product to protect them. Um, it's kind of a trade-off, you know, the chemicals versus the potential um, insect-borne infections that they can get um, from bug bites. Um, I have some products that I recommend from a keeping your baby entertained perspective on the go. So I call them travel toys, but essentially, again, I'm a multi-use, multi-purpose kind of gal. So I always look for stuff that I can leverage in multiple places for my children, um, especially because babies tend to like go through seasons of having like one favorite thing that oh, they yeah. can't get enough of. And then they're like, okay, I've already mastered that skill. I don't want mm -hmm. it anymore. So um, the ones that I really, really like come in all sorts of shapes, sizes, and flavors, right? And there are these <laughs> kinds of toys that have different um, textures, different um, s sensory kind of experiences. They make noises and all of that. And then I really like the ones that give you the option of a hanging um, capability. And the reason being is you can leverage these in cars, in strollers, in jungle gyms for play mats. You can lay them on the floor for them during tummy time. So you just have a much wider variety of uses, um, as well as things that um, allow baby to grasp a little bit easier mm -hmm. and hold on to them. So toys like this are great for the car 
car especially so you're not having to pop a passy in their mouth at every stoplight um and then the other thing that i would recommend and you can attest to this too because mm -hmm. you're still going through it but yes. teething is a real thing teething can last like a couple months it can last like the first two years so That's um you want to make sure that you find what works for your baby have a wet bag sometimes the the cold or frozen teethers are okay on the go but mm -hmm. otherwise they tend to make a lot of mess as they have the condensation come off of mm -hmm. them um so what i really have found to like with my daughter is they have these little mitts um that go on their hands um, and I like this for her because she can, uh, it has texture to kind of soothe her gums um, and it makes noise. So it also has that like stimulation. So she sensory keeps stimulation. wanting to do it, allows her to soothe and also teaches her that hand to hand to mouth motion. <laughs> Just making sure I said that right. Um, and then the other things I like are these types of like little rattle um, so that they can have some sensory. They make necklaces like this for mm -hmm. mom. If you're a baby wearing mom like I was, the teething jewelry is great. I ended up having two necklaces um, that's really just silicone beads on mm -hmm. them. Um, but you have to watch out, make sure that they're made properly, make sure they're all one piece because you don't want it to be a choking hazard. But my son absolutely loved the teething jewelry um, just because it was easily accessible. It was all, always there. So that wraps up our recommendation um, we hope that this was helpful. If it was, give it a thumbs up down below. Um, again, if you're new here, we hope that you enjoyed the content. Visit us at definemotherhood.com for more content. Don't forget to create a login there, build community, and uh, reach out to other moms, get advice, recommendations um, for whatever it is that motherhood brings your way. Um, as always, if you have not yet, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification <laughs> bells if you want to be notified every time that I post. Um, and thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.